Thank you for watching this video on the PA Cloud and Git integration. Uh, I've just spent a fair bit of time trying to figure this out myself, so I wanted to kind of share some knowledge of what I learned. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it may not be completely correct. If it isn't, please let me know in the comments below. So what does Git do? So Git, it can generate and maintain text definitions for chores, cubes, dimensions, subsets, hierarchies, and processes. Uh, it, lets, it has independent connectors for each cloud environment. So if you have uh, different dev prod uh, test instances, you can have a different connector for each one. And it has integrations with Jira, Teams, and of course, PA Cloud. So what does it not do? It does not store data like CSV files. So there's CSV, although CSVs are text, doesn't include the in the repository. It doesn't store binary files. CUB, BLB, feeder data files, application objects, like the Excel files are posted to TM1 Web. Those are not included in the repository. Does it force compliance? No, it doesn't. So uh, yes, you can ignore this whole process and update production directly when you're fighting a fire. After fighting a fire, you can push the changes from prod back into the repository and pull them onto dev. So you don't, if you were to use this, it, it's not forcing compliance with anything. It's just uh, a tool in the tool belt. Uh, what's our challenge? So our challenge is we are a global 24-7 organization with hundreds of users where the downtime can be disastrous. Um, the, there's a special REST API connection or connections for each environment and developer to use. So that's what we want to get out of this is we want to be able to reduce risk around change control. So what's our vision in the near term? So in the near term, we want to avoid handcrafting changes in production for maybe rules or TI processes. We want to avoid server restarts and to simplify the prod to dev pulls and then vice, also vice versa, promotions. Increase control and transparency on dev to prod pushes. So as we're, we're pushing code out to production or, or, or test environments, what are those changes? How do they play well with, with work that other, other developers may be working on? We want to learn if Git is a fit for our team. It may not be a fit for our team. Uh, we're going to batch up promotion of objects to minimize downtime. And we want to run compares between prod and a new feature branch before deployments. So if we can run a comparison between, hey, this is in this branch compared to our, our what's in production or, or QA, then that could be helpful in identifying errors before they become uh, disastrous. The longer term vision is you want to set up a Git action to automatically deploy changes to the main branch at an appropriate time each night. So if we're following this process across the team and we'd go from a feature branch to development, to test, to our main or production branch, our main, uh, main branch of our repository. Once stuff's been pushed into that main branch, it's ready to go. It's been tested several times and been reviewed. So we actually don't need someone to go in there and manually stay up all you know late in the night to try and push it into production. We can just have an action saying, hey, is there any, any promotions to run before ETL on the right window? Yep, okay, do those. Uh, it also helped catch areas of overlap ahead of promotion to production and roll back object easily without affecting data if needed. Okay, so let's flip over to, let's look at, um, we'll look at, GitHub first, because for everyone's going to need to create a personal access token for GitHub to link each of the uh, deployments for, a, like, say, Planning Analytics Cloud into GitHub. You'd also need to have an authorization token for if you're using Planning Analytics on the cloud, or you've got other uh, two-factor authentication or type of security CAM ID CAM security in your own environment. You'd likely want to use uh, an authorization token. So in GitHub, if you go into the top right, you'll see your name there. You can go down to settings. Once you're in the settings window, on the left-hand side, all the way down at the bottom is going to be developer settings. When you click on developer settings, you're going to be able to see uh, personal access tokens. Click on personal access tokens. And then now you'll be able to generate a new token. The only other piece, it'll, it'll ask you to give it a description and also when it should expire. For API pieces, you likely want to have um, you know, depending on your security, maybe there's no expiry, maybe it's six months, a year, whatever you'd like, you can, you can set an expiry on the token. And that's all you need. And that will give us, that will give a Planning Analytics Cloud 
uh, what it needs to authenticate through to GitHub so those two apps can talk directly. The majority of work happens here in Postman, so I encourage make sure you have that installed. And there's a couple different areas. I'll give you, start with a bit of a tour. Starting from the left, the collections represent the different calls or groupings of calls that we would want to use. And I'll just use environments. Environments represents things that would change across different environments. So maybe you have two environments, dev and prod, maybe you have three, dev test prod, or any number. You can have certain variables that are different by environment. And uh, Postman is smart enough to just use those environment variables when, you're, when you have the right environment selected. The environment selectors up on the top right, little drop down, it'll have whatever environments you have set up. And if you want to create new ones, you can just do that through the environments tool. Environment, environments tool itself is pretty straightforward. So when I look at environments and then look at the one I have selected, you'll want to have uh, at least these ones set up. Um, you're not going to be able to see the details on these ones because it'll be, be pixelated out. But the authorization token in particular is, is important. It'll, that's what does the authentication between, um, you know, in this case, Postman and a particular environment to run any of these. Uh, the deployment's going to represent the the uh, the server that you're interacting with. Um, but yeah, and these these change for each server. So now we're going back to collections. For setting things up, you'll need to start with the init. The init's going to be a post call to get init, and the body of that is really just going to be the URL of your repository, along with what you want to call this. Um, this deployment that you're setting up. And this is this username here, this is that personal access token from GitHub. So this is going to say, well, I'm setting, uh, I'm setting up Planning Analytics Cloud, maybe my, my production box, as something that is connected to Git. I'm initializing that connection. To initialize it, here are the credentials that you can that you as a uh, instance, Planning Analytics Cloud instance, can use to connect over to Git. So once I were to send that, it would init, they would initialize it. You don't really you only need to do it the one time. Uh, to verify that it worked, you want to make sure you try and connect with the same credentials as a, as a username. And you want to send that same string as part of a git status to that same environment. And you should be able to come back with a status message that says connected. So when that comes back, you'll see connected is the only one that shows up in blue for the response because that's the most important bit. It's connected, yep, okay. If you do not see connected true when you do a git status, nothing else will work until you fix that. So you gotta stop there and, and fix that if you're, if you're stuck on that point. But going forward, we can now talk about the T1 project file. The T1 project file is a new concept with this git, in, git inter, uh, integration where you can identify what are the different objects that I want to include uh, either in my environment as a whole or as a particular subset that I may want to be promoting or reverting. So let's start with how do you get it? Well, you use a get command to access your team one project file. When you send that command, It'll come back and tell you what you have. Right now, this one is an empty project in my development environment. I want to copy a TI. So I've already crafted something here to say, hey, I've got, I'm going to ignore all of my chores, cubes, dimensions, and processes, except, so the, the exclamation mark before the word processes is the accept or not indicator. So not the process of this particular one. So now when I say I want to send that process, it's going to come back and tell me that now it's set that. If I go back and do a get on my TM1 project file again, previously it said empty TM1 project. Now I come back and say, okay, well now we're looking at the US product hierarchy with the settings that I just set there. So why, do we did, why did we do that? Well, we're working in dev. We want to promote one TI to a new, another environment. How do we do that? Well, first we set the project file to say our project is really just the one TI. That's that step we just completed. The next step is to say we want to push from dev to our main branch in our repository. Now, this is going to, in this case, for the example, development into our main repository. Not production, but our main repository. 
So now if I send this command, it's going to come back with the results of that project file. And here it's going to say, hey, our T1 project file itself changed, along with that one process. But there's two items. There's a JSON file and a .ti file. The .ti file is our actual Turbo Integrator file that has the text of our prolog, metadata, data, and epilogue tabs. The JSON file is a description of that TI. Now that I've got that, I also look find an ID here. This is the most important part of this particular call because when I, it's successfully gone through the project file to say, hey, these are the items that fit the project file. This is what we're. These are the source files that we would we would promote if you want to go with this plan. I will, if you want to go with that plan, which I'll I'll give that a go. I go to the next step. This push plan. So this is get plans, and it takes as a parameter that particular plan ID. So I put the plan ID in there, and then if I were to hit send and, and submit this, it would go and perform that plan. It would push those source files into that branch in my repository that I identified. Similarly, if you want to do a pull, you do a pull and then a pull plan to say I want to pull out a certain set of files from the repository or from a, or from a branch. And that's really it. The, the, those are all the steps we would need to do to do a promotion. And this would, in this, uh, as the example done here, you can promote a TI to production um, without restarting the service. You can update one without restarting the service. Um, and you can also navigate through the Team One REST API uh, functions to just play around with them and see if they, see um, if they work the way you'd want. Um, Okay, I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.